We're at the beach and it's low tide. The tide's way out there. And just look at this. Look how far the wet sand goes, showing how much the tide's gone out. You can see way back there, the light color, that's where the high tide line was. And now it is low tide and it's way out there. It's a little windy, but that's pretty typical for the coast. But we are not sure what we're gonna find, but we'll go check it out and bring you along with us. Since it's a nice low tide, we can definitely check out some tide pools. Yeah, when the tide goes out, it exposes these beautiful rock formations and these shallow pools. And it's just teeming with sea life all over. Go over here and check this out here. This would be pretty much uh, mostly underwater at high tide and uh, we can see quite a bit of it right now and it just exposes all of this gorgeous sea life just all over here. Every little crevice is just full of sea life. It's amazing colors, huh? Beautiful. beautiful as this is, kind of got my sight set on seeing the sea cave that we've been to before. Since it's such a low tide, we should be able to get in there and get some good yeah, footage of that. Get in there for sure. So about every 24 hours, there are two high tides and two low tides in that period. It takes about six and a half hours for the high tide to go out and the low tide to be present. And it is a low tide right now and we're enjoying it quite a bit. Yeah, so if you wanna check out the tide pools, Make sure and check the tides and get there an hour or so before the low tide to get the best opportunity to see the most, uh, most sea life. <laughs> yeah, and we have this little tide chart and they're usually available up and down the coast at different uh, retail locations and things like that. They normally just give them away but you want to be mindful to get the one for the area that you're going in. If you're going to be just 50 miles away or so like that, they usually have a chart that uh, helps you to offset the timing of the tide. And that's good. We'll sometimes just uh, look it up online, look at it in the little tide chart booklets, or we also have an app. It's called uh, Tides Near Me. We'll pull that app up and we can click on wherever we're at and see what the uh, tides are gonna be for that location. So that's quite handy too. So depending on the kind of service you have and, and uh, what your circumstances are, you can pick from one of those three methods to find the tide or you can just show up. <laughs> <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Made it to the sea stacks. We're in back of the stack, so to speak. There's just so much sea life back here. Look at this sea star there. You know, there's about a thousand different types of these things. And if an arm was to become severed off of one of them, it could actually grow back in some species, uh, an entire sea star out of that severed limb. 
That's just amazing. Some of these get up to 40 arms on them. Yeah, and they're really cool. A lot of people call them starfish or sea stars. Um, back in 2014, a mysterious wasting disease attacked the sea star population on the entire west coast, wiped out about 90% of the sea stars. And I remember coming here in like 2015, 2016, you would not find a single one. But then about 2018, they started making an amazing comeback. And it's just awesome to see them back here. They're so beautiful, all the orange and purple, and they just fit into every crack and crevice. Really cool. Yeah, so amazing. It's just absolutely stunning and gorgeous here. very hard to walk around in here. It's quite fragile with all the uh, sea life. I don't want to step on any of it, so I'm trying to step on bare rocks or bare sand only. You don't want to come in here at high tide, that's for sure. Get pretty dangerous and you'll definitely get wet. This water here is essentially pooled up in here, left from the receding tide. Lots of sea life. What do you think of this? Yeah. Lots, huh? Yeah. Mussels, barnacles, anemones. I saw a crab down snails. here too. It's one of red rock crabs. Oh yeah. Look at that guy. And it is alive. That's cool. It's just so important not to step on any of this and kill it. These anemones are huge. It's like a wind tunnel in here. Yeah. So a few tips about coming to these tide pools. A handy thing to have is like a selfie stick or some type of extension pole. I can put some links to some options in the video description. But these are really great for getting shots. Uh, if you don't want to get entirely wet, you can extend it. You can also stay off some of the sensitive areas uh, with an extension pole like this. So you don't have to go walking all over the rocks that have sea life on them. So that comes in pretty handy. Another thing that I like to bring with me is a towel. A towel is a really good item to have because you can wash, wipe off your gear, dry it off if something happens. We had somebody not too long ago that took a dip and uh, got their camera wet and it, fortunately it was just on the outside of it so they were able to use our towel and dry off. We like having the towel. One time I uh, got a little sneaker wave that came up and pushed some sand up my backside. And Susan was able to dust it all off with the, the towel and dry me off a little bit. And then uh, shoes. You're bound to get your feet wet for sure at these tide pools. So it's really good to have some type of pool shoes or sandals or just bare feet if you can uh, get on uh, nice soft sandy areas. And then I like to carry a waterproof bag with me. I have one in my pack and that is completely waterproof and I can put my electronics and things like that in if I'm trying to hoof back and beat the, beat the tide and get through some narrow areas. If my pack does get splashed, I know that those things are safe in that waterproof bag. And then one other thing that's good to have at these tide pools is binoculars. You just you never know when there's going to be something far off that you don't feel like getting neck deep in the water or something like that to see that binoculars will come in handy for. And that's happened to us quite often. In fact, sometimes we've seen spouts out at sea and uh, turned out to be whales and we were able to see them very well with the binoculars. So we usually keep those on hand. But these, these tide pools are a lot of fun.
Sometimes when we go to the beach, we'll bring a blanket and a lunch. Not today. <laughs> we just had a couple snack bars with us. So we're starting to get really hungry. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take off now. We hope you enjoyed the look around the tide pools with us. Maybe it inspired you to go to a tide pool or check out low tide on, on the beach. Comment, let us know. Please remember to share, subscribe, and click on that little notification bell. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. We're actually on the Oregon coast and all of the Oregon coast is designated as public land. So it's uh, mostly completely accessible, only blocked by nature itself. But people can still have property all the way up to the, the beach here. It's just gorgeous how the trees and mountains come right down to the beach. And there's just so many haystacks and rock features all over. We just love being here.